Let's talk a little bit about dog breeds and which breeds are more likely to get cancer. Are there certain breeds that, that are more susceptible to cancer? Dr. Ettinger? Um, unfortunately, a lot of the pure breeds are at risk um, for cancer, and there's a lot of inbreeding, unfortunately, in those lines that predisposes them to cancer. Um, some of the top breeds that I see in my practice are Golden Retrievers, uh, we see Labrador Retrievers, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, and Boxers. I think those are some of the breeds. Um, unfortunately, there's no breed that's completely cancer-free, um, but again, those are some of the top breeds that I see. Dr. Dressler, what, what do you see? Do, are there, are there are the, I imagine the same types of breeds are, are, uh, you, you see presenting with cancer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I live and practice in a different geographic location uh, than Dr. Ettinger, and there are breed-related interactions with the environment. For example, I practice in Hawaii, and here we have a lot of uh, sun exposure. So I will see a, a lot of the sun uh, ex exposure risk breeds. And it's interesting because in dogs, the cancers that increase risk as a consequence of sun exposure are going to be, say, hemangiosarcomas of the skin or, or of the, the, the eye. Uh, and uh, another one would be squamous cell carcinoma. Um, we don't see uh, which is different from humans, we don't see increased risk of melanoma. People have heard of melanoma as the pigmented cancer that pops up in your skin if you're, you know, if you have fair, uh, fair complexion and you have sunlight exposure. So in dogs, they lack that association. Melanoma does not increase as a consequence of sun exposure. What about um, uh, smaller dogs versus larger dogs? Do, is there a, any correlation between how big a dog is and, and its likelihood of getting cancer? Yeah, well, one of the main you know, differences there, and each breed is, can be more or less prone to individual cancers, and certainly the size of the dog impacts, in particular, osteosarcoma, which is a cancer that usually happens in the long bones and sometimes in some other bones and other areas as well. Um, so it's certainly the size of, of the dog can impact uh, which of the different types of cancer when you're talking about bone cancer in particular. And there's, there's other uh, physical uh, characteristics such as pigmentation, uh, you know, chow chows and, and poodles and breeds that have pigmentation inside of their mouth. You may see more cases of malignant melanoma, which is a pigmented cancer that occur inside the mouth. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if you see this, uh, Dr. Edger, or not uh, where you practice, but you know it is uh, documented that dogs that have shorter muzzles uh, versus dogs that have longer noses are more or less prone to nasal cancers. The ones that have the longer muzzles, your collies and breeds like that, uh, are more prone to nasal cancer, uh, in particular as a consequence of inhaled um, carcinogens uh, when you compare uh, those dogs to dogs that have shorter noses like uh, boxers or pugs so when we're talking about nasal cancers in particular. No, I, I, that's true and the um, thought behind that is that as they're, they're breathing in more of those carcinogens and uh, pollutants in the air and the long nose and the long nosed breeds are getting you know trapped in the nose and there's greater exposure to those carcinogens as opposed to the pugs and the boxers and some of those other ones and then interestingly there are other cancers that we see in smaller dogs for example Westies and Scotties um, we see a lot of bladder cancer the transitional cell carcinoma um, and they're you know actually one of the highest breeds that we see that Shelties are also predisposed for that bladder cancer as well so interestingly there are some you know strong predispositions and there's a great list in the book in the dog cancer survival guide um, where you can kind of look at your dog's breed and see what cancer they may um, be predisposed to and it's a pretty exhaustive list um, and it's a good place to check out with that thank you so much dr. Edinger in New York dr. Dressler in Hawaii thanks so much thank you thanks